One, two, three, two, one. Hi, my name is Joshua Dehen. I am a poet slash musician slash theater person slash whatever pays. And I am here on behalf of Renfrew Shire Leisure. Renfrew, Renfrew Shire, Shire Leisure. I uh, hope I got that right. And I'm going to be performing some poems for you on this wonderful Black History Month. Uh, I hope you are safe and in a good space whilst you're listening to this. Relax, talk, chat. The preferred way to listen is to uh, do it quietly, otherwise you might miss something. But, you know, it's online. You can do whatever you like, like your Kanye West. I'm going to start with a piece about a phenomenon that I have experienced as a black person abroad. Usually when I go to a foreign country, um, I'm like a black tom sticking out in a sea of white fingers and uh, then I spot another black tom. There's two black toms now, right? And then, you know, uh, he gives me the nod and then I give him the nod and then we just walk past. And it's, it's never something that was taught to me. It was never something that was like, you know, my dad never sat me down and was like, if you ever meet a stranger, you need to give him the nod. It was just uh, instinctive. And um, I wrote a poem about that. Uh, it's called The Nod. Um, have a listen. I see another black man in a foreign land. We cross paths and exchange a nod. In this kind of place where this kind of pigment is scarce, I don't really care if brethren is from these parts. It's enough that brethren exists because just the last hour passed, some random Berliner asked me if I sold ganja in two languages. Nobody here but brethren knows how mad that is. A nod is not a thing that was taught me, like a handshake or a courtesy. My first time was on an escalator, Helsinki. I was heading up, brethren was descending. We clocked eyes and I hadn't realized how alone I had been all this time. In a mall of cotton looks, in his pair of eyes was when I, was where I, felt seen. As he passed by, I would have said hi, but my pride wouldn't let me. Go for a hug, maybe a high five. I was scared he wouldn't get me. But then he did a nod. Without thinking, I did a nod. And that's how I knew we were safe. Like, all it takes is two black men and Helsinki is now my city. All it takes is two black men and Berlin is my backyard. All it takes is two black men and Stockholm is my mom's garden. Like any other time, any other place, we'd have shaken hands, taken seats at a random, politely hostile cafe, chuckled at the awkward interaction with the counter girl, our masks off, our smiles big and bad, our language uncoded, our laughter untethered to decorum, bullying the premises, our voices loud and unbothered, like we are in the bellies of our mother's kitchens, like we are about to fight, like we live here. Sometimes there's a nod, sometimes there's not. Sometimes they didn't see you, sometimes they don't see you, sometimes they're lost, sometimes you are the one who is lost. Sometimes you're straight jacketed in your own skin and theirs is an unfortunate, an unfortunate disguise. So it's a blessing whenever we too, brethren, clock eyes and our joy is unlocked. I don't want to gas up emotions. I don't want to let them lot know our emotions. So we keep interactions brief, tiny gestures bulked with beef, solidarity as a raised brow, love as a hand on chest, respect as a two-fingered salute and blessings sent with a wink. Within our smiles lie whole sonnets, everyone around us are ignorant 
like were comets passing through a clouded night, like were needles in a haystack state, where the God of the land don't know our face and the law of the lands like know your place, but we found each other. So we must be safe. Here, have a nod. Look around. Are we not alive? Is that not a good thing? So that's one. Uh, three more. My poems are fairly long, so yeah, just to give you some warning. This one is about a completely different phenomenon. Uh, those of you who have a Twitter account know it is a... I think the polite word would be a hell pit. And uh, some people think it started in 2016 with the Brexit and Trump. But it, for me, it started a lot longer than that. Like, um, we in 2013, 2014, you had Gamergate and you had the alt-right, you know, just basically trying to create bots and fake accounts to make themselves seem larger, uh, spread disinformation, disinformation and fake news. And a lot of leftists, or if you want to use uh, the term social justice warriors, would often try and counteract this or support each other. But the problem was on Twitter, it only had space for 140 characters, which meant you had to use a lot of abbreviations and acronyms, which often meant that like, if you were from the outside coming in, you would find it extremely difficult to follow the conversation because you're like, what? What are they talking about? Like a whole bunch of sociology students just having a rant. <laughs> Banter. So I decided to write a um, glossary of sorts, a list of terms. And the way I like to kind of explain things is um, to use analogies. It's something that my mom taught me. She would never say two plus two equals four. She would say, that boy has two oranges. That boy has two oranges. If both boys come to me and say, take your oranges, take these oranges to make orange juice. They are giving me how many oranges? One, two, three, four. Yeah, <laughs> that's my mom. Uh, so she's imbued me with that sense of analogies as a way of explaining uh, uh, stuff to other people. And uh, the analogy I used in this case was, your mom does the washing. It will all make sense. Um, the world according to your mom does the washing. Capitalism. Your mom does the washing. You pay her a dollar. You get her to do your mate's washing. Your mate pays you $50. Communism. Your mom does the washing, you do the washing. Every night you salute a picture of your dad. Socialism. Your mom does the washing, you do the cooking. Everyone is happy in theory. Fascism. Your mom does the washing under the threat of violence. Feudalism. Your mom does the washing and pays you tax. Liberalism. You watch your mom do the washing and you feel really, really bad. Something must be done, you say. Something may or may not get done. Libertarianism. Your mom does the washing, you believe you did the washing. Religion, your mom does the washing, you thank God. Atheism, your mom does the washing, you make a YouTube video demanding peer-reviewed evidence she did, in fact, do the washing. Misogyny, you hate your mom whether or not she does the washing. Patriarchy, your mom doesn't exist, the washing is mysteriously done. Matriarchy, your mom does the washing, you do the cooking, you are very happy pulling your weight in the house. Feminism. Your mom insists you grow up and do your own goddamn washing. White feminism. Your mom hired a woman of color to do the washing. Male feminism. That one time I did the washing, I tell everyone I did the washing. I blog about it, I brag about it, I take a selfie, into story, went on opera, won an Oscar, went on Fortnite, did a dance, I'm more than a woman. <laughs> I'm an Ali. Hashtag me too. 
cultural appropriationism while your mom does the washing you steal her dirty clothes mimic her in public and the public gives you money colonialism you barge into your mom's room claim you discovered your mom's room dump your dirty clothes on the floor americanism your mom does the washing it's in the constitution end of discussion mansplaining your mom does the washing you tell her how best to do the washing you have never done the washing sexism of course your mom does the washing duh misandry that one time your mom refused to do the washing is proof she hates you egalitarianism that one time you did the washing is proof everything is equal no one needs feminism anymore hip-hop every day i'm hustling every day i'm hustling when i bring the basket mama puts the washing in narcissism you look good in the clothes your mom washed and finally surrealism the washing does your mom yep that's that one okay uh 10 minutes i've got time for two more poems yeah uh let's do Niger Brit. Let's move from just going around phenomenons right now. Uh, this is the phenomenon of being a black British, or in this case, a British Nigerian, and uh, going back home. Uh, I was born in London and I went back to Nigeria and I came back to London. Yeah, uh, so I got to experience uh, several levels of um, disentanglement. Is that the right word? Like separation, essentially, from. My, my place of um, the place that I was residing in um, when I I think it was only between years one to four that I genuinely felt like I belonged somewhere because I mean as much as you can it was the 80s there was racism in the NF uh, but then I went back to Nigeria and I had this accent and everyone called me Oyibo which is a uh, Nigerian for white man and uh, yeah, that whole feeling of our, you know, being an outsider stuck with me all the time when I was there. And then when I came to London, I had lost my accent and yeah, weird ass Nigerian. <laughs> so um, this is the piece, it's called Niger Brit. Niger is short for Nigerian. You'll find us on the benches of the Pentecostal churches, black, uh, black shirts amongst the all whites. You'll find us in the corner of the traditional wedding parties, playing Street Fighter 2 Turbo all night. Plastic fork on paper plates, chicken bones piled like they're mushing at a rave. Those of us yet to see our father's grave, who need visas to go back to the motherland, who are not on speaking terms with our mother's tongues, but break bread with pigeon. Yes. I be he fee speak and but he no sound right. I be he no the greeting but he no bar right. And him be on Igbo, but you know, not quite white. They won't let us forget the time we ate the ebba and the okra soup with fork and knife. And like any middle child, we did the best to prove ourselves, to prove we belong. We were the first to learn how to start the generator when a houseboy was away. We learned how not to look the goat in the eye as we drew a pen knife across its neck, our shiny Vaseline feet pinning down its legs, and we drank pepper soup straight from the bowl, one go, no spoon, no water, and we ran with the kids of mechanics, and we fell on the earth, the earth roughed our knees, and we'd, we'd get up quick, quick, and we'd mask our stolen palm wine breath with the innocence of super malt, and we ate the pawpaws of the pawpaw tree, even though it was cursed by the witch at the end of the road, our Christian bellies illiterate to pagan spells and we did not cry when all of that sugar gave us a stomach ache because tears are a British tradition and pride was our father's dusty compound those of us born there overseas those of us told the tales at Heathrow Airport how Akamu tastes just like cornflakes if you add enough milk whose hearts beat twice when we hear of back home, whose hearts skip twice when we watch the World Cup. Eagles for the qualifiers, Lions for the quarterfinals, heartbreak wherever our flag is pitched. Us Nigerian British, us British Nigerian. Yeah, um, so I think, uh, I'm going to do a poem I just read uh, recently and um, 
so read, sorry, wrote recently. Pandemic, um, just uh, literally last week, I was um, reading, as I'm sure all of you are, about uh, this second lockdown in this winter and flu season that is uh, approaching. And um, I guess for me, it's kind of like uh, realizing that the idea of normalcy has kind of left us now. And every month I look at the month that just passed and was like, do you remember when, you know, we, that was all we were scared of or passing, you know, we, we didn't have a fire tornado in, in, in July. We didn't have um, coronavirus in January, you know, and in December last year, we weren't scared of World War Three. and November, we were only thinking, you know, about Porogin and not an election. But yeah, now we're, we're staring down the barrel of, you know, another period of staying indoors and running for, um, running for, uh, what's the word, um, toilet paper and queuing. And I just thought I'd write a piece about that. And it's called, uh, it doesn't have a name. Before 2020 shuts its mouth for good. Before this coming winter runs us through. Before we're all applauding overworking nurses again with open palms and empty pockets. Before we up our sticks and lock ourselves away. Save for the fam and the closest six before the sequel forces us to watch the outside world through window glass and smartphone screen. Can we, at the risk of turning into pillars of salt or something COVID related, can we look back? Look at all that we've lost. Look around us. Look at all that we have. Worldwide, the atmosphere is harsh and every coming month is taking us on some darker excursion, washed to the bone with fear, sirens blotting the ears, and there is no guarantee that when we next see, we will not be worse from all of the changes. I guess what I'm trying to say is, before this brave new world is here to stay, we should stock up on today. Gather up these current memories, gorge ourselves in the mundane, right now, whilst the light still holds sway, step out. Lean against your front door, sneeze fearlessly, stand at a bus stop, order coffee from the locals, feel the black heat cut through the paper cup, go people watch in public spaces, Go park, dig your fingers into the earth, taste the awful from heat, heat, taste the awful from dust. Take time out to make time for friends you haven't seen for time. Go church, hold clean hands, hug someone, see your elders, say you love them, tell your loved ones that you love them from a distance if you have to. Just do you, do the most of you while you still can. Soon we'll all be on WhatsApp campfires, Zoom DJ sets, FaceTime sexting, broken every way from all those constant broken news, from all that constant broken, from all that constant breaking news. Next flick, next flick, next flick, Netflix party and chilling, quarantining so we don't get ill. And if you're like me, and this incoming lockdown is likely to stare you mad. Maybe these moments, these memories we make might keep you still for a minute as they will me. Yeah. So that's that. Um, I think that's a good place to end. Yeah, that's a, that's a good place to end. I've been Josh. You guys have been um, amazing. Uh, one short poem to round it off. Big up to uh, Lenfew Shire Leisure for giving me this chance. And um, love is the law. Unclench your jaw. Rest your shoulders. Drink lots of water. 
Wash your paws. Goodbye.